was of particular relevance to the conference, since there's a chance that by BWEA 32, the party will be in power. A good time then to assess the relative strengths and weaknesses of the main political parties. The first point when considering the next general election is that we probably shouldn't, or rather the Tories probably shouldn't, count their chickens before they're hatched. I think there is a real consensus amongst all the political commentators that Labour's uh, um, are going to lose the next election, they're going to lose their majority. There is, however, far from uh, consensus as to whether or not the Tories are likely to win an outright majority. And the difference between uh, the two uh, could have very substantial implications for uh, the impact of the general election and the next parliament on our, uh, our industry. Just to take a little bit of a historic look, in all but two general elections since 1970, the <coughs> uh, lead opposition party has actually, uh, their vote has actually fallen between the last, in the last 12 months of a parliament, between uh, uh, um, uh, what would be likely in this case, May this year and May next year when the general election takes place. In all but one uh, uh, general election since 1970, the uh, uh, governing party has seen its share of the vote rise, often not very substantially, but at least rise to a certain extent. And in all but two general elections, the third party, Liberals, Liberal, uh, um, uh, Alliance, Liberal Democrats, have seen their, their vote rise during the campaign itself. Now, if you take that as likely to happen uh, at the next election, um, that means statistically there is then a very good chance that we're going to see a hung parliament. The, the Tories need to be winning about 40% or above, uh, in some scenarios significantly above 40% to be assured of the majority, but Labour only need to win above about 30% to eat into that majority and force a hung parliament. And that's broadly where the polls are at the moment. So there's a good chance that, that uh, there will be a hung parliament. So what does that actually mean? Well, firstly, it means that, that uh, the minority parties, the smaller uh, parties, will have a real influence on the political agenda. Who are those parties? Well, the Lib Dems are likely to be returned with maybe about 50 or so uh, seats, a little down from where they are now, but still a big block. Uh, the SNP is likely to increase on its seven seats. They're looking at potentially, they believe they could win at as much as, uh, as 20 seats, probably more realistically around 12, 13 seats. Um, and the DUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, um, uh, is likely to pick up an extra seat, likely to win a seat from the SDLP in Belfast. And they will be a strong block uh, of votes in uh, uh, Parliament as well, and obviously um, not always, but on, on a lot of issues are strongly aligned with the Conservatives. It should also be noted that Sammy Wilson, who some of you may be familiar with, is a DUP MP. He was the Northern Ireland Environment Minister, and only in Northern Ireland can you have an Environment Minister who doesn't believe in climate change as well as hating wind. Anyway, so what are, what are some of the attitudes of the political parties who uh, um, uh, entering the election? Well, uh, looking at the Conservatives first, we're all, I think, familiar with much of the localism agenda that the Conservatives have been promoting. I'd say a split is probably uh, uh, too strong a word. And certainly, I think there's a tension in the Conservative Party between, uh, and I'd say the fault line is often between those people who have been in government, experienced government, realise that when they're in government, they're going to need all the help they can get to pull all the levers they can get um, to deliver their agenda. And those who often have come from a local government background haven't had experience as a central government and who, frankly, after 12 years uh, um, um, are, are more convinced about uh, the need to devolve power away from central government. That's similar to what happened in the 1970s. You may remember Lord Helsham used to talk about the elective dictatorship um, when uh, the Tories were in opposition, uh, that when the Tories uh, became the government, that didn't change very much. <coughs> Labour in opposition in the 80s and the 90s talked about ending rate capping and set, giving power back to local councils. I must have missed that during the uh, Blair regime, and now we have the Conservatives talking about a localism agenda. And I think that there is it would be right to, to think that, they may, that, that some of the 
a more, I would say, extreme, the more radical uh, uh, rhetoric around that may not actually be delivered in practice. Also, the Conservatives have a dislike of targets, particularly European targets, but broadly accept the 2020 renewables targets. But even if they're not wild about uh, uh, renewables as part of the mix in terms of that, uh, simply um, on the climate change issues or as an end in themselves, the Conservatives are increasingly convinced that renewables have to play part of the mix because of energy security issues and a fear of over-dependence on, on gas. But there is the question as whether or not the Conservatives will, when the crunch uh, uh, comes, when difficult decisions come, 